Hey guys, welcome to the sixth uh, video lecture in the Writing Language series. So this week it's going to be about expression of ideas, which um, if you remember is the second category of questions other than grammar. Um, I know we did grammar last week with the punctuation lesson, but I think it's pretty important to go over this stuff. So this week is transitions, setting up ideas, and conclusions. So this is, um, I think these are three different types of questions, but they're all linked by the common theme of just like each of these types of questions asks you to link ideas within the passage. So it's basically improving communication and yeah, that's what they ask for in these questions. So transition questions, I think they're pretty self-explanatory. They'll just ask you to choose the best transition. Um, generally it's between two paragraphs, but often it can also be within a paragraph. So yeah, um, setting up ideas questions. This is pretty much just like an introduction question. Like some questions will ask you to find the best introduction to a certain paragraph. Um, and that's pretty much what a setting up ideas question is. But these are generally more specific and they're, they'll ask you like to choose the one that like best, uh, best sets up the information that follows. And conclusion, conclusion questions, they just ask you to conclude a passage or paragraph. So yeah, um, the main way to answer these is you just have to read the text and get a better understanding of it. So like um, with grammar questions, you don't really have to read that much. It's just you have to use proper grammar, I guess. But these will actually require some pretty good reading and understanding. So now that we got that over, um, there's transitions is the first type of question. So um, as I said, they require you to choose the best sentence to transition between ideas, either between two paragraphs or within a paragraph. So yeah, there's just a few steps to answer these transition questions properly. So the first is read the text around the question. So if it asks you to find the best transition at the beginning of a paragraph, which it usually does, read both the paragraphs, like the one before and after, and just get the main idea of each. Um, usually the best answer is the one that is, is like most related to those two main ideas. Um, generally with transition questions and just all these um, expressions of ideas, questions in general, like the incorrect answers you can tell because they're just like not really completely related. But yeah, these are pretty tricky sometimes. So next step is to um, compare the text before and after the sentence. So does the um, information that follows the transition, does it support um, the previous information? Does it contradict the previous information? Or does it answer a question posed in the previous information? So the last step is based on the relationship between the parts before and after the question, you should have a pretty good idea of the content of the transition sentence or like um, what purpose it's supposed to accomplish. So if the information after, after the transition supports the information before, the transition should restate the point made in both parts. Um, if it contradicts, then the transition should also provide a contradiction. And if the information after the transition answers a certain question, um, how the answer was obtained is usually stated in the transition. So if you just practice, you'll see some of these types of questions. You just gotta get used to it. So here's my example question. Um, so right off, I'm just gonna notice, or I'm gonna take note of where the transition is. So it's right in the middle. Deer mouse predators include owls, snakes, and various members of the weasel family. So yeah, that's where it's supposed to be. Um, my first step is to read the parts before and after and get the main idea of each. So before it says, deer mice are noted for the dramatic population increase after forest fires. So I'm going to note here that this paragraph is probably talking about how forest fires can benefit um, deer mice populations. So this sentence, there are fewer obvious food sources in severely burned areas and fires often remove all vegetation, giving mice no place to hide and increasing the risk of predation. So this seems a little weird. Less food sources, easier to be hunted by predators. That does not relate to the um, main point that forest fires lead to a deer mice increase. If you read this, you might think that forest fires completely destroy the deer mice population. But um, we'll read the part after. So the part before, the main idea is deer mice are benefited by forest fires, but it doesn't explain how. Um, forest fires will actually allow them to be hunted easier and have more difficulty finding food. So afterwards, um, these two sentences, this one talks about how mice can actually access more food than before. And this last sentence talks about how, um, yeah, how lack of vegetation gives no place to, 
uh, for the mice to hide and makes them easier to hunt, as it says here. Um, predators are also harmed by the fire. So there's a decrease in predators, which can help the deer mice population increase. So it seems like before it talks about how deer mice are harmed, but after it talks about how deer mice are benefited. So since we can see that there should be some sort of contradiction, we'll look at that in the answer. So first of all, we'll just look at A, no change. Deer mouse predators include owls, snakes, and various members of the weasel family. Um, that's all right. You know, it just talks about the predators because it does talk about how like deer mice can be easily hunted, but that's not a good transition. So I don't think that's correct. We'll just look for the one that provides a transition between the ideas that the deer mice are harmed and the idea that deer mice are benefited by forest fires. So um, D is the best one. It says, but despite these apparent disadvantages, which refers to this stuff before, it's actually possible that fires improve conditions for deer mice, which is a good transition to the next couple sentences because it introduces the idea that fires can help them. So that's the correct answer. Our next type of question is setting up ideas. So these are pretty much like introduction questions. They'll just ask you to choose the best sentence or phrase to set up examples that follow. So often it'll be like at the beginning of a paragraph and it'll just like set up the information in the paragraph. Sometimes it'll be within or in front of a list of stuff. So it, they're different, but there's just a few steps you need to follow and they're pretty similar for all types of questions. So yeah, you read the information that follows the question like where the setting up ideas question is in the text. And like, yeah, just note its relationship to the message of the passage as a whole or the main idea presented before. And uh, just like in the um, transition question, supports, contradicts, answers a question. Use the relationship between idea after the, sen after the question and before to kind of help you uh, make that informed decision. So yeah, the correct choice should match the content of the following ideas. So if a list of example follows, the answer will introduce that list. And if a comparison follows, the answer will discuss like the part of the comparison that's before. So we'll look at this example question. This movement called the Great Migration would transform urban America and recast the social and political order of the country as a whole. So that could be correct because the Great Migration did have some sort of effect but we'll look at the part after because it's asking which um, sets of the examples discussed in the following sentence. So this following sentence is the most important. In particular, Detroit, Chicago, and other Midwestern industrial cities experience significant demographic changes. So we can say that it, like more specifically, the sentence afterwards doesn't talk about how the Great Migration affected America as a whole, but it affected certain cities. So we're going to look at um, the choice that talks about cities, and the best answer is B. Um, yeah, it just best relates to the examples that follow, which are the, these two cities and how they're representative of other ones. All right, so the last type of question is the conclusion question. So these questions, I'd say, are the most straightforward of the three we're discussing today. They'll just ask you to choose the best conclusion to a paragraph or passage. So yeah, the correct answer is the one that is most related to the main point of the passage and just brings everything together from the previous text. So here are the steps to answering these questions. You determine the main point of the passage or the paragraph that you are concluding with this certain conclusion. Um, yeah, it's also worth noting the various points that, that were already made that support the central theme as like the conclusion can sometimes contain these. If it's a paragraph conclusion, you just link the main idea of the paragraph to other ideas in the passage. Like if it's not the last sentence of the passage, there may be paragraphs that follow. So you're gonna have to conclude with a relation to following paragraphs. Um, the last one is choose an answer that is most related to the main idea of the paragraph and when applicable, the one that best relates to following information. So like an example of one that relates to following information, um, I guess if the paragraph talks about like a study by scientists and then later it talks about other studies, it's, it'll just kind of conclude the study presented in that paragraph and kind of relate it to other studies that follow. I, that's not really a good example, but that's the best I can say. Um, so here's the example here. This is just a paragraph conclusion question, since it's obviously too much for me to put the whole text from a passage here. Um, I, I just put one paragraph. So the writer wants a conclusion that states the main claim of the paragraph. Which choice best accomplishes this goal? So this paragraph, I'm, I'm reading through it. 
So Grandma Moses began her career. She's a painter. Began her painting career in 1938. So she talks about like you know little themes from her life these pretty simple themes folklore traditions images kind of like stories from when she grew up in the 19th century so here it says these quaint themes might seem at odds with the taste of a sophisticated 20th century audience but moses renew moses's renewal of 19th century themes gained popularity with an american public that was struggling to cope with world war ii era social and geo, uh, geopolitical challenges so this before it talks about um, Grandma Moses, who she is, uh, her simple themes, and the third point is like how you know people at the time kind of wanted something simpler, and her work kind of gained popularity. So that should be reflected in the conclusion. And um, if you just go through all these, the one that best matches it is C. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, all these questions are kind of different, but you follow actually pretty similar steps. Um, I added yeah, my explanation here, and then we have, I think, four additional practice questions. So yeah, thanks for watching.